Things are heating up between Coinbase and the SEC. And I have to tell you, this was the inevitable path forward. And really what's going to come down to is Coinbase is going to force the hand of the SEC because they cannot give them regulatory clarity is what we'll be talking about for quite some time. So what it really comes down to is there was a piece today in Decrypt. Coinbase asks the court to force the SEC to clarify crypto regulations. Here's what we got. Crypto exchange Coinbase took action against the SEC late Monday, which would be today, asking a federal court to compel the agency to respond to its demand for clearer crypto regulations. The exchange sent the SEC its so-called petition for rulemaking last July, last July, and asked the regulator to propose and adopt rules for digital asset securities. It also sought answers to 50 specific questions that will provide clarity and certainty regarding the regulatory treatment of digital asset securities. That has been nine months. It has been nine months since they asked for them to do that. And this is why things can't move forward because we're stuck because of one individual in one agency that is overlooking everything and is just kind of screwing up everything. And that's just how I see it. Under the law, the SEC is required to address Coinbase petition within a reasonable amount of time. So the first time they did it, it was in July. That was nine months ago. Now they're asking for them to do it again. And they're trying to force their hand to say, give us the regulatory clarity and the answer to these 50 questions. And if you can't do it, here's what's going to happen. If the SEC's response to Coinbase petition is not to create new rules, then the company would have the opportunity to challenge the SEC in court. This is what us here on the channel have been saying, specifically me, you got to sue the SEC. They're bullies. And the only way that you can get rid of bullies is punch them in the mouth. And that's really what it comes down to. This is back a tweet I sent on September 14, 2021. SEC Chair Gambler states it again. Most cryptos are securities. Very few are not. In my opinion, the market's got two options. Wait for the SEC to sue every single exchange out there. And they've been doing that. Either that or Wells notices. Or we can go on the offensive and take the SEC to court. I said that again in March 6, 2022. I said it again in February 14th of this year. I said it's time to sue the SEC. We must put aside our differences, pool resources, and put forth an offense against this tyranny. And I quoted Benjamin Franklin was all hang together. Almost assuredly, we shall all hang separately. Tell me what you think about that in the comments section. I don't see a way around this. If you want to move forward, the obstacle is the way and the path is through the SEC. However, not all things are terrible. There are some countries that get it right. Uh, UK FCA wants to work with crypto industry to develop regulation. I got to tell you, it's so nice to hear about other countries doing the right things because they want to adapt and they want to grow. This is a really quick uh, piece. UK Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, wants to work with crypto firms to shape the regulation. In February, the UK government's financial arm, the Treasury, launched a crypto consultation where it is seeking feedback from stakeholders on how to regulate the sector. The FCA is one of the main crypto regulators in the country, along with the Treasury, and it's been registering crypto firms to operate in the country. And I have to tell you, it's amazing to me just how far ahead the other countries actually are for adoption and regulation and moving things forward. And I just ask myself, why is it that all other countries besides the United States are really on board with this. And I got to tell you, when I see these things, it's not that the banks are against everything. I mean, we've got a lot of different banks. We've got Citi and JP Morgan and, and, and BNY Mellon, a host of different banks. We've got BlackRock with its 10 trillion assets under management, which is, is the largest asset manager in the world. So it's not really that. To me, it's just looking at the people in power. The people in power, the United States, is the, the current administration right now. What I take a look at it, the reason they don't want to move this forward is because I think they believe it will weaken the dollar. And that's why every other country out there is like, sure, let's get this done. And the United States is like, whoa, hold on. Let's just take a breather, a breather. Anyhow, let me know where I'm off on that one. And then to move forward, again, some positive news, Google. Google adds Web3 features to cloud offerings. First of all, you're probably asking yourself, and it's a good question, what's Web3? because we talk about it all the time, but no one really says what it actually is. I put this together to make things super simple. There's Web 1, one Web 2, and Web 3. Web 1.0 was in the early days of the internet. It was only read-only web pages. If you're old like me, I remember just going to these web pages, just reading, reading, and that's it. You couldn't like submit a form, you couldn't buy anything. It was just Web 1.0. 
Then they got smart and said, maybe we should start doing some things. Web 2.0 was all about centralized power and being able to purchase things and, and do different things on the internet. And now Web 3.0 is instead of having everything centralized like a Netflix or a Meta or stuff like that, uh, we're going to decentralize everything and you're going to be able to uh, read, write, and own your digital assets, which is why uh, you have a digital wallet uh, within your browser. Debatable about decentralization between MetaMask, but that's uh, a video for another time. But this is what we got. Google sees the future, and they're like, let's get on board this. So products who become part of this new program will receive unique Web3 benefits, private Discord channel with Google Cloud Web3 products and engineering teams, Web3 training courses and grants from, from Google Cloud's foundation partners, Aptos, Celo, Celo, Flow HBAR Foundation, Near, and Solana Foundation. So if you were a little bit surprised on some of those, I was too. I didn't know that Aptos, Celo, Flow HBAR, I knew about Near and Solana, but the other ones I was uh, unclear on. So they are working uh, with Google to move things forward. So all the different companies that are coming in and go, we wanna do Web3, great. Guess what? We've got these partners and we'll give you grants to build on them. That sounds good. Sign me up. Google Cloud has been working on Web3 products for several years. On top of that, Visa just came out and said, hey, we want to hire a senior developer for Web3. Uh, a company hoping to hire a senior software developer for its crypto team. Its job listed posted last week. World's second largest card payment organization said it was looking for experienced software engineers, plural, who are passionate about Web3 stack of technologies. Again, we can see where things are going. Unfortunately, America either doesn't or they just don't want it. And then lastly, to finish up, I think this is where the puck is really going, which is this, gaming. Web3 and blockchain gaming. This just came out. I have not been following this, I must admit, but I do see the opportunity for blockchain game. This is from Ultra Games, and they said, hey, the day has come. We're officially launching today at 4 p.m. UTC. Download Ultra now and start playing today. And I'm like, eh, whatever. You know, but what kind of games are there? Here's all their games that they're offering. Walking Dead, Backset, Agatha Christie, Siberia, Siberia 2, Arpheus, and a bunch of other ones I have no idea what they are because I'm not a big gamer. I'll just be honest with everybody. But look at those games. And these are like, that's a lot of games. These are like triple A ranked games. Aren't some goofy games like Axie Infinity and stuff like that. So I was like, tell me more. Went to the website. I will link in the description. You can check it out. It's only available right now on PC. So you can download it and you can get to start to play all these games. What's interesting to me is they're going to offer digital collectibles or NFTs. And then also in their white paper for Ultra, uh, you can play immediately and earn money. You can earn Ultra Coins by participating in beta tests, watching ads, curating games, and more. And I was like, very interesting. Tell me more. So here it is, the Ultra Token. I got to tell you, I'm not a big, like, this is a low-cap gem and stuff like that. But, I mean, it is interesting what's happening here. And they got a lot of games, AAA ranked games. Ultra the Token is down 7% today. Buy the rumor, sell the news, right? They just launched today. We all, well, I missed it but I'm not here to chase. But I will tell you, it's interesting that this token itself at one point was at $2.39 in November, 2021. And now you're looking at a paltry 29 cents. Ugh. So might be something to check out. Not financial advice, just very interesting. They got a max supply of a billion. They got roughly a quarter of that. Here's the 24 hour trading volume and here's the market cap of uh, 80 million so far. Anyhow, something to look at. But there is one last thing I will say. I think these games, which are fantastic and look quite interesting, are missing a big, huge market. And that is the casual gamer. So before I talk about this, let me just show you this. This is from Statista. And we've talked about this before. How many gamers are, are out there? Because you got to ask yourself, because maybe you're like, I'm an adult. I don't play games. Okay, it's okay. I play games sometimes on my phone, but they're mostly casual games that kill time. When I'm in line at like the store or I'm waiting for my flight, or I got nothing else to do, I'll just play a quick game. You know, three minutes, five minutes, just crush some time, right? Better than me being addicted to uh, Twitter. <laughs> so you have to understand how many gamers are out there. There's around seven, eight billion people in the world. Three billion of those people are 
active video game players, which is a wide swath if you want to say what they actually are. Hardcore gamers, are they casual gamers? Different things. But here's the, here's the, the data. The gamers by region, mostly they're in Asia, Europe, Latin America, North America, not a big one. But you can see here that we've got a lot of them in the Asian countries. A lot of them are between 18 and 34 years old and 35 to 44, a ton of game subscriptions. But what it really comes down to is this. What type of games are they playing? Action shooter, racing family, adventure games. What's the biggest? Casual, 63%. And that is being overlooked, I think, by a lot. I think Gala is getting into it and some other ones. and Maybe Ultra will be. But I want you to do me a favor. I play this game. It's eight ball pool. They didn't, they didn't pay me to talk about it. So don't calm down. It's a free game. You can download on the on the App Store and Google Play. So I want you to download this game if you got time, 100% free. There's going to be a bunch of offers in there. You're probably going to have a little bit of fun depending if you like pool or not or just want to kill some time. But what I want you to do is play this game. And when you're playing this game, be cognizant of what it's doing and the things that are going on in the background. And I want you just to think to yourself, is this the next evolution of Web3 gaming, casual gamings? Tell me if you think this will be the next big opportunity for gaming, just like this with the amount of people that are out there, because gamers are, especially casual gamers, at least 1.5 billion. And that's it. I will link this in the description. I'll also uh, clip this to the very top of the comments so you can find uh, the link to download this. And again, it's 100% free. Just check it out and uh, tell me what you think as far as Web3 Gaming. That's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. A lot of things to talk about are time sensitive. Again, I still say that the crypto market is not a set it and forget it. I think you have to really be uh, aware of the things that are going on just to help you out. If it's not me you're going to subscribe to, at least subscribe to somebody and just keep up to date. That's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.